Welcome to Tech Fridays, our Friday review of Canvas Technologies featuring Donna Hall, wonderful instructional designer in continuing ed. I want to begin today with first a thank you. Thank you to everyone who has stuck with these Tech Fridays, who has come, who has asked questions, who's followed Donna's lectures. Uh, really, it is just wonderful to see you, to see each of you on these Friday afternoons. It's great, so thank you. I also wanna thank Donna. Donna has really put in a superhuman effort. She's given us 90 minute lectures, week in, week out. And as teachers, we all know, a 90 minute lecture is exhausting and it takes preparation and it takes focus and it takes concentration. And Donna makes it look effortless. It truly looks like this is no thing for her. But that just shows we all know that the smoother it is, the more preparation went in. So I really want to say thank you to Donna Hall. Thank you. I also want to plug our What's Your Plan Symposium, which takes place this Monday at high noon. You can link to the What's Your Plan Symposium by going to the Going the Distance webpage. I know this is a lot of, of little names that I've come up with, but Going the Distance webpage has all the activities, but it has a clear link to the What's Your Plan Symposium. The What's Your Plan Symposium is premised on engagement. It is premised around five breakout groups that will be repeated through the afternoon, and there will be discussions around themes. I want to say if you RSVP now, you'll be included in the raffle, and the raffle will have wonderful uh, gadgets, tablets to write on, cameras to use, ring lights. It will conclude with some excellent graphic novel giveaways. So enter into the RSVP and you're entered. I tease you now, it will have the special essential Batman graphic novels. Here is Batman year one. You don't want to miss the great, ooh, the great David Mazzuccelli's art and Frank Miller's plotting and prose. This is, you don't want to miss, and this is just one of the essential. You get the whole Cuskin essential pack. So don't miss the symposium. On those lines, thinking about, I've been thinking that where are we now? We are a few weeks out of the semester. It seems to me clear that sadly, COVID is building. It is building again. And we are going to be in a place, by my thinking, early on, where we're going to be out of the classroom and back to remote teaching. So what does that mean? To my mind, the premise of good teaching, good remote teaching, will not be solved through some additional whiz-bang technology. We're not going to get through this by having an app that suddenly solves all our teaching issues. We're going to get through it by returning to the basics of good teaching, by revisiting what makes a strong teacher, by, by focusing in on our students and considering what they need for learning. So, my feeling at this point is, is that Canvas, Canvas has all we need to deliver our classes. Donna is leading us through Canvas. And today is on assignment generation and grading. I believe it essentially has all we need. There may be some imports necessary, but those are fewer than we might think. What we need to do is to think about what makes great teaching and to think about how these new constraints highlight and demand new strategies for communicating what we are about. When we are about learning and reflection on knowledge, that remains true to our mission regardless of the modality. So I ask you all to think about Canvas, to listen to Donna, 
but more broadly to think about what is great teaching in this time of change. Join us for the symposium because our problems are not gonna be solved through some kind of add-on. Our problems are gonna be solved by returning to the root of our mission, teaching and thinking about human need and how to communicate the pursuit of knowledge. So on that note, let me stifle myself and turn it back to Donna Hall, who's gonna lead us in a great investigation of assignment generation and grading in Canvas. Thank you, Donna, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the kind words. So I wanna introduce Deanna. She's another instructional designer and she's here to help me. So when I draw a blank, she can be my brain for me. <laughs> you might see kids popping in and out. <laughs> So I apologize for that. <laughs> I love to see kids. That's great. I love to see other, we, I, I don't have any children. I don't have any kitty cats. I saw a kitty cat back there somewhere and I was really pleased. So kids and kitty cats are very welcome in Tech Friday. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> so let me share my screen here. So I wanted to let everybody know, for people that haven't attended any of these, I um, take, take questions as we go. So if I explain something and it's, you didn't quite catch it, stop me, we'll go back. You know, this is kind of a collaboration of helping each other figure out everything. So please let me know if there's anything you need me to show or you have questions or anything like that. Okay. I'm pulling chat up so I can see it. So um, assignments. There's a, there's a little bit of confusion about the assignment tool versus assignments. So I wanted to go over that to begin with. Assi the assignment tool basically sets up your gradebook. So if there is something listed under the assignment tool, it is in the gradebook. Uh, the mistake I've seen some people make is they want to give due dates for files in the course and they put them in, they create an assignment and link to files, but it's not graded. So you don't want to put those in here. You want to put those in your modules. Okay, so be aware of that. And if you want to weight your assignments, so say you want discussions to be 40% and assignments to be 40% and quizzes to be 10% or whatever, we can weight them. What you first have to do is create categories. And to do that, or what Canvas calls groups, is you just create a group, and it'll ask you, name the group, and then you save. And that'll create these different groups. If you decide, oh, I don't want this called written assignments, I can edit it and change what I call it. So I want to call it just assignments. Okay. Notice I can also go, score or multiple scores, drop the highest score or never drop. If there's some that you don't want to drop in this group, you can add them here. Any questions on that? Okay. So we've got all of our different categories here and now I need to weight this. If you don't want to weight it, if you want to just do points, all you need are your assignments and it helps to have them in categories for your students. So um, this would be a non-weighted grade book, but if I want to weight it, I would do assignment group weights. So it's these three dots, assignment group weights. And then I would weight the final grade based on the groups. And then I can give them, you know, the weights. If I had a group called extra credit, 
I can actually take this up above 100%. So if anybody's familiar with D2L, you couldn't take it above 100%, but with Canvas, you can. Um, so I could have an extra credit group that was 5%, so the total would be 105, uh, and that's fine. So if I save it, then we see that everything's weighted, okay? So that's the difference between points and weighted. Okay, again, you got to make sure that you're not putting stuff in here you're not grading. All right. So let's look at assignment. I want to create an assignment and I click this plus assignment here. And what you need to do is name it. I highly recommend that you name it something that's obvious as to what it is. You know, my examples here don't really tell me what they are, but I would normally do this and then say what the paper was. Okay. Um, so that it, it's more, it's easy for the students to understand. In here, you would put directions. So what they're supposed to do, if the directions are long, I would actually link to the file that explained them. You wanna say how you're gonna grade it. You wanna say, um, you know, if, if you're not grading as they submit, say you're grading after the due date, let them know that it's not, you know, grades will be posted within you know, 48 hours of the due date or something. Just let them know that right in here in your instructions. Okay. Points. This is the total number of points the assignment is worth. The assignment group is again, which one of my groups I want. I want this in a written assignment. I want to display it as points. Okay. Now, no submission would be an ungraded assignment. Or we can do online, which is where they would upload a paper. If you have one that, if you were in a face-to-face -face class and they had to have something into you, it would be an on-paper assignment. And then external tools, we'll get into a minute, into in a minute. But we're gonna go online. And when we go online, it tells, gives us some options. So you give them a text entry where they type right into the assignment. If they have to submit a web, website, you could just have them submit just the URL. If you're having them do a video recording, you could have them do media recordings or file uploads. Now what's nice about file uploads is I can restrict the type of uploads. So you know, I, we constantly hear about people, well, someone sent me you know, a, a, a strange doc type and I can't open it. Well, if you restrict it to the type of file you want, then you don't hit that problem. And notice I just put the file type, comma, file type, comma, there's no spaces, no periods, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, so I can limit that they only submit once, or I can go unlimited so they can submit multiple times. So if you're having them <clears throat> try to improve where you give them some comments and then they can do it, you can have them unlimited. Okay, there is a plagiarism. We're going to go over that in a minute. We can make this a group assignment and I want you to notice something. This is actually holding the settings I made for the last assignment I created. So you've got to be aware of that. Um, that it'll, it'll try to think what you want. Um, so make sure you check all the settings. There's a peer review option. 
there's a sign. This is to everybody in the class. I could actually change this to specific people or a specific group, which actually would allow me to do it up there. Um, a due date, and an end date, and when they can get in and start. Okay. The due date and the end date can be exactly the same. Any questions on just creating a simple assignment? I have a question that maybe um, I I here. Let me let me explain. In my classes, I have students write essays and then they revise them. And I've always treated them as separate columns here, even though the second essay is going to supplant the grade for the first one. I'm starting to think here that I should just be using this category and using um, two submissions. For you that. could, yes. And then the then the higher grade would would uh, that, pardon me. Maybe that's where my question is going. I realize what happens to the other submissions. Do they are they still up there? It's still up there. Okay. 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 So I have a question kind of along those lines as well. This question comes from Rhonda Huntingman, who's unable to join us today. She's interested in exploring mastery grading and wants to know how Canvas can accommodate mastery grading. And is this submission mode, is there a way to set number of submissions very high and kind of just let people pound away at the assignment until they master it? Well, the only, the submission attempts, it's either limited or unlimited. So yeah, if they want to keep submitting, you can go unlimited and they just keep submitting. Um, or, you know, if you go, well, I'm going to give you three tries, I go limited and then take it up to three tries. So you've got your choice here of how many times you want them to be able to submit. Keeping in mind that if they go unlimited is they can upload as many times as they want until the due date. Good, okay. good, that's good. That raises a question for me, um, th again, thinking of my own uh, concern where I've got people handing in an essay at a, by a fixed due date, then I uh, grade it, hand it back to them, then they fix, they submit the rewrite by a fixed due date. So it's not, it's not kind of as many times as they like, they have to do it. And now I'm wondering, would I, would I then change the due date for this? You can change the do so the first time they submit is it graded? Yeah. Is it a separate grade or are they are they two different grades for the the draft and for the final or is it one I, grade total? Ultimately it ends up being one grade. Um pardon me, what did I mean? They did they get a real grade on the first one and um if for some reason they don't hand in the second one, even though they're supposed to, then that grade would stand. But I think then that would mean I'd, I'd choose. Um, you want two, two assignments then? Yeah. Okay. okay. Would probably be the best way to do that one. And that way it's real obvious to them that I got a grade on the draft. I have no grade on the, the final. Right. Okay. Um, if you combine them together, then they can't really tell. Okay, thank what you. The grade on the on the rewrite is the only grade that's going to count towards their their grade their course score. So let's say someone turns in a paper and gets a sixty five. It's really bad. They put a lot of work into it and they turn it in again and they get an eighty five. And what you want is the eighty five to be the grade that counts. You don't want that 65 in there because you're basically penalizing them for having turned in a bad paper the first time around. So yeah. I guess my question is how, how do you set that up so that only better score counts? 
Well, then you would use one assignment, allow them multiple attempts, and then when you go in to grade it, you would overwrite the grade from the first one. And would you have to do that manually? Would you have to go into the grade book and change, or would it automatically? Well, what you would do, so when you're grading an assignment, so let's just go into this one right now. I want to grade this assignment. I go to speed grader. You know, I'm seeing what this person submitted the first time. I graded, I add my comments. You know, you can do a video comment if you want to. You can highlight, we can use these tools to, to highlight, draw, put text comments on the paper itself. Okay. When they resubmit it, you would come back in here and change your grade here. Uh, add additional comments if you want, whatever you want to do. Yeah, so I, I do something similar and I would, uh, Martha, I would then probably use that comment space to say, to write um, the old grade, turn to a new grade, but then it sounds like Donna, you're saying that the new grade has to then go into the assessment box or else it won't go into the grade sheet, it won't populate the grade book. Yeah. Or you could go through grades too, but you're going to be in here anyway to see what their changes are. So you could just overwrite it here. Questions on that? Anna, for those where you allow them to submit it multiple times prior to the due date, as an instructor, are we able to see all of their submissions or are we only able to see their most recent submission? Deanna, are you, do you know for sure? I'm pretty sure you can see all of them. Um, you used to be. <laughs> um, now it's actually, they overwrite. So if you have a student, let's say that they have from Monday to Friday to submit it, and on Monday he or she uploaded a document, you will be able to see that document, but if he or she actually uploads it again on Wednesday, it's gonna be overwrite on the old one. Okay, so it doesn't show you all of them. And we can test that. Yeah, because so the last time I tested it, it was doing that, that it was overriding. Um, that was like a month ago, I want to say. I don't well, know. Let's, let's try it. So as you can see here, I'm doing it through actually the category this time instead of through the plus assignment. It doesn't open everything up, but I can click more options. And then it does. And then I can put my directions. I can say, you know, it's a online files. I'm going to go unlimited. This is not a group assignment. And something to be aware of, notice it's saying right now, it's 12 a.m. But when I save and publish this, it is, and then edit it again. Let's see if it makes me, it switches it to 11.59 p.m. So just be aware of that. Okay, so now I can co come in as a student. There's my student. Something to be aware of if you've never seen what a student's view looks like is they can do it show by date or they can show by type. The date can get confusing and we're gonna go over this in a minute, but we can see these are all with due dates in the future. 
but I have a pair assignment that was due today, is passed. They can still get in here and do peer review. They might miss this because it'll be under here. So you might suggest to your students they do show by type so they don't miss that one. But anyway, so we've got this assignment. And we're going to go ahead and add a file. Oops. Okay, so it's there. I'm going to submit the assignment. Okay, so it tells me I've submitted it. I'm going to go in as the instructor. We go to speed grader. Here's, here's the submitted assignment. Now I can grade it. So let's do this. We're going to give them a five. They need to add some stuff here. So I'm going to grade them and submit it. Okay. And Donna, could you, could you actually use some of the grading tools for just a five seconds so I can see what's going, what, how that works? So here, I can type. Nice. Here so, I can what did you do draw. There? <laughs> I'm not good at drawing. Here I can highlight and I can make a comment. So for every tool that Donna is using, it always gonna show you like a comment, even with the drawing, you can do the circle, the circle, quote unquote, <laughs> that Donna did, and it will show you that little box to- um, and I can make a comment. Yeah, make a comment as well. You can also okay. use that little square, Donna, like to select something. So I can do this and leave a comment. Thanks. This is great. This actually is going to save me time. I, I've been wondering about the speed and the speed grader, but I think I'm finally getting it. Okay. What, what does the little blue balloon signify? It's just a comment. Okay. So they, they see that and then they can click it and, and look at it. And okay. so we're going to, I'm going to submit this again. And now we're going to go back students so they, you can see what the student sees. Okay, let me refresh. So you Donna, are you there? Oh, I think we lost her. <laughs> oh my goodness. We've lost Donna? Yeah, yeah I think she's frozen. That's she's frozen. I'm... Yep, she's frozen. There she is again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I can see the file. If I can just talk over this for a second, I think um, Martha, and, Martha, maybe you and I grade in the same way. We're grading essays and we're grading um, content and we're grading, you know, trying to correct all kinds of things, spelling, grammar, whatever. Uh, Sadly, yes. <laughs> and so in fact, I, I really was having trouble doing this on Canvas. Um, so I actually bought myself a home scanner so that I could write all my comments longhand and then scan the thing back to the students because that oh. works for me because I see, it helps me see the, um, the corrections and it helps the student anyway. But yeah. now that I know about the actual speed um, and the many colored balloons and everything. I mean, I think this might actually change my life. So I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. yeah. So I want to add, now I want to resubmit.
Yeah. Donna, we can't see your screen right now. You can't, okay. Where did it go? Hang on. That actually raises for me the question of what people see when I think I'm sharing my screen, because it doesn't always seem to be what I think I'm sharing. It's like Bruce is saying, yeah, that's a problem too. Well, yeah. This is. Okay, now are you seeing my screen? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna browse and get that another file. Let's just do that one. Submit. Okay, so hang on. So you can see here, submission details, download. This is a new assignment. It did overwrite, I can't see all of them. Okay, so it's there. And now we're gonna go back in to the assignment. Let me refresh. So it does, it overwrites it now. It used to yeah. not do it. It no, holds they, the they, comment from the last time. It holds the grade. Mm -hmm. But now I can add additional comments. And Donna, on the submission to view, there's a drop down. Does that show you the past one or is that? Well, let's see. Oh. It does let us see both of them now. OK. The only thing I don't like about Canvas is they change stuff and then. <laughs> every month, every month they're changing stuff. And then, then we got to figure out what they've changed. So yeah, you can see both of them by flipping here. Thank you for noticing that. Uh, yeah, before there was not the submission to view, the, before it was submission, submitted files and it just gave you the list of them. And then after that, you actually weren't able to see that it was just overwriting it and now they changed it back, but I don't know. <laughs> there must have been a whole bunch of uh, comments, complaints to them about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of what they see. Still trying to see. It's showing both the comments. And there's the if there is more, if I wanted to make a comment to my instructor about it, I can view feedback on it. Okay, but it does, I am not seeing anything that shows me the original. So they haven't corrected it for uh, the student as far as them being able to see. Unless it's farther down. Hang on, let me just make sure it's not hiding below. Yeah. Well, this is stuff that we can practice in our sandbox, right? Where we can yep. submit it and then... Well, the only problem is, is in your sandbox is whether you have a um, test student or not. You can ask OIT to put a test student in for you. They have one, but it might not be in there to begin with. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but yeah, I am definitely not seeing that it, you can see the previous file in here. So they haven't fixed it for students yet. Okay. So, um, what are some other things you can do with assignments? 
So one of the things you can do is use Turnitin, so plagiarism. There's a website here, let me copy this. So I just put that in chat. So it talks about it. There's two ways to use Turnitin. There's what they call the quick way, and then there's a grade mark integration. Um, I'll show you both and how the students see it and how you see it. There is a known issue in that if you use the quick integration, when you see the grade when you first go in, it's, or the, plagiarism score, it might be different than what it is once you get completely in and look. Um, and it's because it's only looking at general sources, not at any other files that have been submitted in the class. But once you get in, it does. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. Um, the big thing if you're using Turnitin, and I tell everybody this, don't use it as a stick use it as a learning tool. So, you know, that draft have, have it a turn it in assignment that, that now they've got to correct and have a good discussion as to why it was marked plagiarized. You know, let, let them learn about it because it's amazing how many students don't understand that if I copy and paste something out of a website, it's plagiarized. You know, if I right click a picture and save it to my computer and then submit it, it's plagiarized. If I resubmit something that I did for another class, it's self plagiarism. They don't understand that, a lot of them. So use Turnitin as a teaching tool, not as a stick. Okay? So I, I want to second that. Um, in a previous uh, university job, I was in charge of a very large lecture and we used Turnitin as a stick. And looking back on that, I regret our policy because we used it as sudden death in the course and it didn't allow students to reflect on the experience and to learn from it. I guess over the long term it did, but not within the course. We took plagiarism as a shocking offense and I would reconsider that now especially with international students who really don't understand I believe don't understand what they're doing when they plagiarize so I think that if we could use turn it in I mean you have to be thorough and firm but as a chance to teach people rather than simply to punish them. I think that's a much more fruitful way forward. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to be careful when you look at, you can't just look at the score. You actually have to look at what it marked and whether it's truly plagiarism or not, because if a student, you know, reworded something or has quoted something, has a reference, it's going to mark it. Um, but that's not plagiarized because they, you know, they put a reference in for it. So you got to be really careful and, and review them and not just, oh, the score is 80%. You know, you got to look and then you need to teach them why. Uh, apropos of, um, I, I agree with all of this. I've spent a lot of time with my students um, doing it, plagiarism exercises and trying to explain it and doing it in my global state of mind class, trying to explain sort of culturally why why in, in American education it's considered so bad. But I did have a student from Saudi saying to me, well, I think if it's not more than 15% plagiarized, it's okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're yeah, They just really, there has to be a good discussion about it. Yeah, yeah. And Could uh, you just spend a little bit of time? So there was, you said that there were two different scores. One was sort of a Yeah, quick I'm going to show you that. Because I've had, in, I've, I mean, I've agree with everything that people have said about using it as a teaching ex opportunity. Um, I, I'm very hesitant to use it as a, as an instrument of punishment. But I've also had students, 
in a big class, I've had occasions where two students turn in the identical paper. Yeah, then it's a stick. <laughs> <laughs> and I think have done so because they think, well, there are 150 students in the class. What are the chances that the same person is going to read the same paper? Are they, are they use the same, <laughs> same you know, company to write their papers for them? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so that's a different kind, I mean, basically yeah, that's different. Applications, I've gone back and said, you have to go back and do this assignment again. And yeah. you have to do it in such a way that each one of you turns in your own paper rather than, you know, group sourcing or whatever. Um, yeah. I guess I, I was interested in the, how, you, how you set up to turn it in so that you do catch those two files submitted that are identical as okay. opposed how, so we're going to kind of look at that real quick, and then I have some examples where I've submitted. Okay. So if we're doing the quick integration, and that's just basically the turn it in, it doesn't give you the grade mark. So I can come down here, and I can go in the plagiarism view, go turn it in. Now I've got some, some decisions here. Do I want to store the submitted paper? So if they're submitting a rough draft, you might not want to store it if you're going to have them resubmit it because it would mark it 100% plagiarized the next time. Yeah. Or the standard repository. Then, you know, what are you going to look, look at? The student, which is everything that students have submitted at CU, websites, periodic journals. Are you going to exclude anything like this? And then you can use Grammar Checker. Okay. Um, so it'll kind of, if I enable that, it actually gives me, you know, what kind of grammar I want to look at with dictionary. Wow what what they should be looking at here. Okay, and then I would, you know, show it to them immediately. Um, especially if you're letting them resubmit. <laughs> you know, some people, if you're using it as a stick, then they go never or after the due date. It's like, why would you do that? Students can't learn that way. They can't improve that way. Okay, so this is the quick integration. Okay. If you want the more advanced integration that doesn't have the known issue, then what we can do is up here, the submission type is an external tool. And we come in here and we find turn it in and it's just turn it in, select it. You can load this in a new tab or load it in, uh, in the page. I found that when I loaded it in a new tab, it got a little confusing because I had to keep clicking stuff. So I leave it here, okay? Let me just give this a name. And are going to go ahead and, and you want to put due dates in for a turn it in assignment. Because it gets gets confused. Oops. Gets confused if you don't. It tries to um, think what you want. So save and publish here. Donna, does that do these dates then populate the calendar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So notice this is different. Um, instead of it opening where you have speed grader, it actually opens it up where I can actually add more directions. I can change this. There's a peer mark inside of Turnitin. Here are all those submission settings again. Okay, that's under settings. 
Okay, if you need help, there's a help box. If you wanna see, and I'm gonna submit this. If I wanna see what's submitted, I click the assignment box. Okay, so that, so that they're different. So let's do this. I'm an instructor who's coming in here so here's the turn it in quick where a student has submitted. If I click this, notice it looks like a regular assignment. And I click speed grader to grade it. But there's this. Okay, so it tells me it's 4% plagiarized. I can click it. It'll open it up here and then you can look at these marks. Um, so here's the 4%. And I can expand this. So <laughs> the University of Tasmania. <laughs> and it's marking page one of four. <laughs> so that's why you've got to watch stuff. Okay, here's the next one. It's marking page 204. So anyway, I can look at that. I can come in here and I could, there's some uh, already created quick marks. So if I wanted to do that, I could do weak transition. It's, it'll show you what it's gonna say. So a student would click that and see it. Um, you can write your own comments here. I could actually do a voice comment. Okay. Or I could, um, you know, just write voice comments. If there is a rubric you created and turn it in, it would be here. When you're ready, you put the grade in up here. Okay, then make sure you click away from that. And if we close this, notice it doesn't come over. So you gotta make sure you get it in here too. Okay, then we can submit it. Did you see the warning that the student is getting an unusually high grade? Oh. I think that's very interesting. <laughs> no, it's just, I guess it should be like 47, right? Because I had the assignment set for 50, but in turn it in, it looked at it as 100. So when I didn't play with the assignment, with the, uh, it's looking at it as 100. Okay, so that's the quick turn it in. Grade mark turn it in. This is the one that's more advanced where you don't have the problem. You actually get this assignment box, um, the report and all of that. You see, you would see everybody listed here. So one thing I don't like about speed grader, it's hard to see who's submitted. This would show everybody that's submitted. No problem. If I click this, it now opens me up in the grade mark again. And this one grabbed the correct grade. Okay. I can do the same thing. This is a good student. I can click here and go, all right, I'm gonna type some stuff here. I wanna highlight, make a comment. You know, I can do a whole bunch of stuff in here, whatever I wanna do. Okay, the hard part about this is it's like, okay, do I save it? What do I do? You don't. and it comes over. So little difference between the two. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Mm 
Okay, so let's look at grades and see what it shows. So here's my turn it in, the quick turn it in. Here's the turn it in that was through grade mark. They're here. Okay. So we've got them and we can see that I, there's another assignment that needs to be graded because the icons show. Now, if you are, while well, we're in the grade book, if you go, I want to grade all the assignments before students see the grades. Okay, I don't want them to see them as I grade them. I want to get them all done first and do it. It used to be you could do that right in uh, the assignment. You can't anymore. You have to go come into grades and you have to click this little cog. And then under grade posting policies, you switch this to manual. And you can see here, grades are hidden by default. This is any grades that haven't been posted yet. So if you've already posted grades, they're not hidden. But any new grades are hidden by default. The students don't receive the notifications. And then once you post them, it will send the notification. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you for reviewing that because that um, you can get tangled up in that. Yep. Yep. And so you have to do this if you've got it manually. So update. Then you've got to remember to come in here and once you've graded everybody, you've got to, this would say post grades. You've got to remember to post them or the students won't see them. So if you have students that say, hey, you said you posted grades, I don't see them. Come check this. So <laughs> You know, we all do that, forget to hit the post. I've gotten all tangled up in this. Sometimes these columns are a little tighter together and you can't see, usually there's a little eye with a no nukes. Yeah, right here. Right, so, but you have to pull those columns out to see it. And sometimes you can hit post grades, but your work within the comments has already overridden that. So it's valuable to post the grade within the comments. I believe there's a little poster, place to post there too. Um, I go belt and suspenders in this because um, you can mess up and not post your own grades and after doing all that work. Yeah. So Donna, this conversation has been great and very valuable, but I realized that we have a group of people here who, who assign essays and are very interested in the essay assignments. And we only have half an hour left, 34 minutes. I wonder if you could talk about some of the affordances of Canvas for non-essay assignments. Okay, for, yeah. I want to share one more thing in assignments that people might not be aware of first, and then we'll do it. This one's fairly quick. So one of the other things that you can do in assignments is do peer review. So great thing to do, have them submit a rough draft, get, get students to do peer review. Okay, again, if I create this, I can come down here. And I've got a, hang on, get this to, online and now I've got peer review. So I can check this and then it gives me the option to I manually assign who peer reviews each paper or you can automatically assign it and say how many peer reviews it got to do. Okay. Here's the important part. This date when the reviews are assigned, so if you're doing automatic, has to be after the due date. Because if this date is before the due date, it will assign the ones that have been submitted up to that point. It won't assign any that are submitted after. So you want this to be after the due date. Okay? And then, some people like that the peer reviews are anonymous. Some people don't. If you're going to do peer reviews, make sure you discuss with your students 
appropriate peer review. Okay, so they understand that they can't just trash a paper and not give reasons why. Okay, so when you do that, and then I get this peer review assignment. Over here as an instructor, I have a new link that's peer reviews. As a student, and I go into the peer review assignment, and why is it not showing it to me here? Should show me, oh, because I haven't assigned it as an instructor, hang on. <laughs> Peer reviews. So you can see here, I had it manually set. I can now assign. So I can give, you know, this one, select a student, add this one, select a student, add this one, select a student, two, three. Oops, I messed up. So that's a hard part because I should have assigned this one to one. And now to this guy's not going to get one. So I can do it that way, or I can just go assign one peer review per. And now it does it and I don't have to. So it did kind of mess up here. So I would have to come in here and go, all right, let's, oops. I would have to get this switched. Add this one, trash that one. So now each person has one. Okay, so now as I come in with a student, Now notice, see we've got assigned peer reviews here. So you've got to point this out to your students. Once they're assigned, they will see this. I can then click it, you know, see the paper. So I can open it and then I can add my comments and everything like that and save. I could, you know, open it and play with it, whatever. All right. So that's kind of how the student would do it. Once the student has done his peer review, get that, let's get back here as an instructor. Go back to the assignment and I come in here I can see what's reviewed, okay? So I can see what this person has done. There's the comments. I can look at it. I can grade the peer review, okay? So that's kind of how, how peer review works. So other assignments that you can create and this, this can also get confusing, and I suggest people not do it this way. I click in an assignment here to add a new assignment. And of course, this one's not letting... I can't, so... Notice something here. If I click this, it's specifically assignment. If I click the category plus sign, I can switch and go, I want to create a discussion. I want to create a quiz. I want to create something that's not graded. Um, so I can, I can switch between these. I have found that instructors get kind of confused when they do that because the icons get funky on you. So you can see here icons, 
are different. That's a quiz. That's a quiz. You know, here's the discussion icons. But then when I go into discussions, notice the icons change. They're not the same. So just be aware of that. I highly recommend that if you want to create a discussion, create it through the discussion tool. If you want to create a quiz, create it through the quiz tool. Okay. That way you don't get confused as to what you're creating. They will still show up here in the assignments because if they're graded, they will still show up in here. All right. Questions. That is complicated. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I wish they called this tool something else assessments, but it, it's really confusing when you go assignments, but assignments are everything that's graded. Would you but then you create an assignment, <laughs> which is different. Would you take us into the quizzes a little bit and into the external tool use? So the external tool use, other than turn it in, are like we showed in the videos, which was doing the Kaltur or the PlayPosit video quizzes where you can create an assignment. Um, the rest of them, if you have third party publishers, you can, you can link them in here. Unfortunately, I can't help you with that because I do not have access to any of that. So I can't show it to you. You actually have to work with your publisher and have them help you do that if you don't know how to do it. Um, it's frustrating for me because I can't help you because I can't see it. Um, so be aware of that. Quizzes. I think we got that set up to look at next week or the following week. The big thing about quizzes that I tell everybody right now is, and it's not prompting me because I turned it off. There's a, what's called a new quiz tool. And it's, if you've got it turned on, it'll ask you which one you want to use. Don't use the new quiz tool right now. It doesn't work correctly. So you want to, if, if you get prompted to use the new quiz tool, turn it off. All right. Um, quizzes, the same thing. I don't know. It's got all these settings where you can do a practice quiz, which is ungraded, a graded quiz, a graded survey, or an ungraded survey. Okay. You can shuffle answers. You can set a time limit. What I tell people with time limits is to really be aware, students on slow internet connections, if you've got quizzes that are image heavy or have videos in it, you've got to be aware of that, that it might take students longer to load. If it's a really long quiz, it will take a lot longer to load. So you've got to be aware of how you time it. Um, then you have other options in here. I don't really want to go over this a whole lot. Questions, right now, you can create them here. If you have already previous questions, you can find them. You can group by questions. Um, there are some publishers that have question banks that you might be able to pull in a canvas. I actually have a tool called Respondus that um, only works on a Windows machine, but it will, um, I can upload quiz questions from that. So if you've got a bunch of quizzes that you need uploaded, you can reach out to me and I can try to help you do that, uh, make it easier because the copy paste really takes a lot of time. Other questions? A question, this is more, I think, about the grade book, but it's sort of linked into this. I ran into a real problem for the last time I used Canvas because I gave my students 10 mini assignments. They had to look at an image, they had to explain what it was, and so forth. 
And, but they had to do only eight of those 10 assignments. So that they had to do four before the midterm and four after the midterm. And then when I went in at the end of the semester to look at their grades, it turned out that if they didn't do an assignment, I thought it would automatically show up as a zero in the grade book, but it doesn't. Yeah, you have to actually set that up. So mm -hmm. a couple of things, because if it's automatically set at zero and you haven't created a group and said, um, edited it and said, drop the lowest four okay. scores. Okay. It's going to add the, those zeros in there and mess up your final grade. Yeah. So you got to make <laughs> sure that the hard get, Yeah. So you got to make sure you do that. But then um, if we go to grades and we come into here, uh huh. Under this late policies, automatically apply grade for missing submissions. You need to check this and go grade percentage is zero. Wow. Whoa. Notice you can also apply a deduction for late submissions where it'll automatically deduct. Okay. Again, we've got the manual and automatic, and then the advanced is if you want to overwrite the final grade, which is a new feature. Okay. Okay. There's some poking around that you have to do. <laughs> yep. Something that came up um, a couple weeks ago, someone was saying, it doesn't show these in order. Be aware of your view. You can arrange by a bunch of different things here. So if, if you want a different order, then look at these orders and do it. Default order is the order it's listed in the assignment. But you know, A to Z will then alphabetize, you know, due dates, oldest to newest, newest to oldest, points, you know. However, so just be aware of that and you can filter so you only see stuff, certain things. Okay. And then you can export your grade book or you can import. So if you export it and change and manually change stuff and you can import it back in, um, then you can look at one person in particular or you can look at the history of you know, what's been posted and when. Can you go back to show us how you got to that late policies? Okay. Tab so in grade book. Go into grades. Yeah. Over here, this cog wheel. Okay. Click it. It's this late policies tab. Got it. And then you've got it down here. Thank you. Let's see here. If there's time, can we go over how PlayPosit integrates with the gradebook and how to set it up? Okay, so PlayPosit, pretty sure I have something in this class. So if I want a PlayPosit assignment, I'm going to create an assignment. You know, put my directions in. Where where we're gonna do points, and then it's an external tool. But we come in here and we find PlayPosit. And I click that. What it's gonna do is open this page, which really confuses people. And you hit the set bulb link, and a bulb is a PlayPosit video. So something you've already set up in PlayPosit. And now I can come in here and grab whichever one I want. 
And yes, I want to link it. And then I hit select. And then I hit save and publish. And here it is. This is your view as an instructor where you can go in and look, preview, monitor, you know. So if I click this, it takes me and shows me if students have looked at it, whatever. Okay, as a student, what they see is the link when they click it, so here's here's the view. Get this up higher. And then I can watch it. And I don't know if there's actually any questions on this one. There are okay, if I had set up questions, it would let me know there was questions and then I could go through it. But then, you know, answer the questions at the end, it will actually show me a score. I don't think I've got one in here that's. And then my understanding was that those scores would automatically feed into the gradebook assignment. Yep. Is that true? Yep. Okay. So here's one. I think this one's got something in it. Yeah. So you can see these dots tell me where the where the um, questions are. No, I'm not getting prepared. And I can actually so there's the question. And I've already answered it, so it's showing me. When we go through, a student could actually come in here and look at, you know, the, their questions. And if they hadn't done points, it wouldn't show it. But you could do notes. And if I had it transcribed, it, there would be a transcription in here. But yeah, then it will, will feed right into the grade book. Thank you. OK. Other questions? Did I miss any questions in chat? I think I got them all. All right. Again, if you have questions, um, you can email me or our whole group. Okay, oh, Deanna got it in there for me. <laughs> also, if you haven't done so yet, if you haven't gotten yourself in the community course, um, I would recommend doing that because it gives you a link to all our tutorials, breaks them down, lets you know what tutorials we have. Um, it also gives you templates that kind of helps you start. So um, that's all in here. So yeah, that would be something good to get into. That community course is, of course, available on the Going the Distance webpage. Yeah. So if we go to the Go to Distance webpage, you can come in here, right in here, and it gives you the directions for accessing the community course, you would just click this to, add, to enroll. Other questions? Okay, well, I think we had a good session today. Thank you as always, Donna. <laughs> um, next week will be more on quizzes. And of course, Monday is the Going the Distance Symposium the um, What's Your Plan Symposium. Uh, it's right up there on the uh, Going the Distance webpage. You can learn more about it there in RSVP. I invite you all and would be delighted to see more of you. So thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you all for showing up. Onwards. Thanks. Definitely onward. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks. Okay.